President Mohamed Buhari signs 2021 Appropriation Bill into law. Defense Headquarters gives account of operation in 2020. And United Kingdom pledges aid to Nigeria to fight COVID-19. Hello and welcome to News Now. I am Fola Shadi for Green Day. President Mohamed Bari has signed the 2021 appropriation bill of 13.588 trillion naira into law on the last day of the year 2020. The signing was done at the presidential villa in Abuja on Thursday and was confirmed on the official Twitter handle of the presidency. The president also signed the 2020 finance bill. TV 360's Jerusha Amaraibo reports. The 2021 appropriation bill is ready for implementation. The signing of this document comes exactly 10 days after both chambers of the National Assembly passed the 13.6 trillion naira budget. With the president's assent, the bill has become law and the implementation is expected to commence in January for 2021 fiscal year. The 2021 budget tagged Budget of Resilience and Economic Recovery has recurrent expenditure 5.64 trillion naira, capital expenditure 4.125 trillion naira, debt servicing 3.324 trillion naira, and statutory transfer at 496.528 billion naira. Minister of Finance Zainab Ahmed at the sign-in said the budget and the finance bill are designed to achieve economic recovery of the nation. Our capital budget implementation is today at 81%, and that is really outstanding. And because we have released so much funds into the system, this will enable the ministries, departments, and agencies to fully utilize the funds that are now sitting with them. So, Your Excellency, the aggregate performance of the 2020 budget today is 97%, and that is a first in this country, and that is a credit to you, Your Excellency. Also, Your Excellency, in keeping with the promise and the commitment that you made to Nigerians, that subsequently from 2020 uh, upwards, that appropriation acts will be accompanied with finance bills that will be designed to enable the implementation of the national budget. President Mohamed Buhari, in his speech, said his administration is committed to fix Nigeria's economy despite the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. The president charged ministries, agencies, and departments to diligently implement the budget to achieve the vision of the government. Heads of ministries, departments, and agencies are to cooperate with the Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning, and more especially with the Budget Office of the Federation to realize this very important objective. I also wish to thank the National Assembly for completing its work on the 2020 Finance Bill. This bill is very critical for the successful implementation of the 2021 budget of economic recovery and resilience. Its message underscores our commitment as a matter of routine practice to support federal appropriation bills with annual finance bills designed to facilitate their implementation. Present at the signing of the budget include Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, Senate President Ahmed Lawan, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives Femi Rajabia Mila. Others at the Council Chamber were the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, Bas Mustafa, some cabinet ministers, as well as few top government officials. Jerusha Amaregu, TV 360, Nigeria. Bernie State Governor Babagana Zulum visited President Mohamed Bari at the Aso Villa. Briefing correspondents after the closed door meeting, Zulum said the discussion bordered on the security challenges with Evelyn Borneo and Northeast region of the country. We need to holistically look into the issue of security. Uh, inshallah, the government of Borneo State will collaborate with the federal government. 
with a view to bringing stability in the northeast, in the entire northeast, in the year 2021. The president has, has assured Nigerians, has assured people of the North State that we shall see improvement in the year 2021, and I'm optimistic that we shall see it. But God willing, I think uh, the president is up to the tax to ensure that there will be major changes in terms of security station in the entire nation in the year 2021. Still on security issues, more than 2,000 criminals were killed in the year 2020 by the Nigerian military. This was part of a scores card presented to journalists by the defense headquarters in Abuja on Thursday. TV36's Oni Adekunle filed in this report. It's been 365 days of operations across the country in fighting criminals and insurgents, especially in the northern region of the country. Here at the Defense Headquarters, journalists have been briefed on the activities and successes of the military in the last one year. Within the period under review, thousands of criminals and insurgents were killed and arrested, with over 800 kidnapped victims rescued by the Nigerian military and other security agencies. From 18th of March, the 30th of December of this year neutralized 2,403 criminal elements across the country. That is a significant number. If you convert it into military strength, we are looking at something close to about three battalions of armed people. The total of Kidnapped victims, 864 for the period, 1,910 criminals were arrested, majority of them under investigation, and at the end of the investigations, some appropriate uh, judicial processes have commenced, and others will commence on completion of investigation, of which we are always fully informed. Coordinator of Defense Media Operations, Major General John Enenche, says the operational performance for the year is a show of the commitment, synergy, and determination by the troops to lay down their lives to protect the integrity of the nation. We are happy and excited that as we are grabbing the collaborators, the informants, and at the same time we are deleting the, 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 the criminals, the ones that are combatants, so and then arresting the suspects also screen them, those that are found wanting, culpable, you know, the other security agencies that is their responsibility to prosecute, handle them. I think that, so for us, of all the figures I've given, all the statistics, all of them are equally important and exciting to us. An NGF further solicits for the cooperation of the general public towards providing credible and timely information that will facilitate proactive engagement in the operations of the Nigerian military and other security agencies in Adikunle TV360 Nigeria. It is another end of the year and Nigerians as usual have started projecting into the new year with many counting their blessings and losses of the year 2020. The Gaussians are hopeful that the year 2021 would be a better year. tv 360 Simisola Adigun reports. 2020, the year of the pandemic, the year of recession, and the year of ENSA struggle. It has been an enduring year for both government and the people. As the year winds down, many are eager to do away with it, ready to start afresh with a renewed sense of hope and determination. These people say 2020 has been a trying year for them and look forward to a better 2021. I can pretty say this year has been so rough, but all thanks to God we are still alive despite the pandemic and everything but we thank god we are still alive i mean god see us through the 2021 yeah the year 2020 is actually a great year a year that is full of lots of challenges but we thank god we are alive and we are okay today nigerians being religious people never forget to acknowledge the role of god in their lives and are resolute to strengthen their relationship with him everybody is praying now but we want perfect solution from God. 2020, 2021 must be a better year. Better years for me and my family, especially most Nigeria. 
in Nigeria? Mm, my plans for 2021, I mean, right now, currently I'm in polytechnic, so by, I hope by next year I shall be through with my ND. Then after that, I pray also, I hope in 2021 I got admission into the university. My plan is to have a year that is full of lot of goodies, year of uh, greatness of myself and to do well in my professional life and in my business. We know the country is facing a lot of challenges, but in 2021, I'm hoping there's going to be a great year for every one of us, including myself. Obviously, staying alive in 2020 is a huge achievement, and citizens are ready to say goodbye to a year that tested their faith, resilience, and determination. Simisola Dibu, TV360, Lagos. The low-key festive period as a result of the economic recession and the impact of COVID-19 is also evident in the transportation sector in Nigeria. This time of the year is usually a period of good business for transporters as many will be moving across the country to visit and spend the holiday period with families and friends. TV360's Mary Kano will visit the popular Ojota Park in Lagos, however observed that it is not business as usual for transporters as business is rather dull. The hustle and bustle associated with this park, especially during the December period, has suddenly disappeared. Traveling from the west to the east at a time like this does not come cheap, and this is evident in the number of people traveling home to spend the festive season with family and loved ones. For those traveling, the transport fare is enough to worry. Last year is more better than this year. The price from year to us is still, last year is too high, but now it's still exists. As compared to the last time I traveled by, I think it's about the same thing. Maybe then if it was one, two, today it was one, five. Uh, before now, this goes, I'm sending to Ibadan. They used to collect, uh, some drivers will collect 1,000, some will collect one, five. But now they are collecting like two, five. So I have to beg them to collect that two, five. The limited number of passengers willing to travel is a source of concern for transporters who had bought fuel at an increased price. While those traveling are equally not happy to be paying almost double of what it used to be as fair, they are also mindful of the COVID-19 pandemic and have taken precautions because of their loved ones. I just ensure I take the precautions whenever I'm traveling. I use my sanitizers, I wear my face masks, and also travel at a convenient time. I'm a medical practitioner, so I've been trying to maintain my normal social distancing then. I try to avoid parties, and I try to avoid close, I mean, close contact. But we do use sanitizer when you get to a place where they ask you to use. We use face masks when you get to where they ask you to use. The security of the journey is another concern to the travelers, as there are reports of bandits and kidnappers operating in many of the country's major highways. But for the travelers, they express confidence and hope that the journey will be smooth and safe. Mary Kanu, TV360. Lagos. Moving on, traders of Olorunda Oyindola markets protested the demolition of their markets by Amuo or Dauphin local government under the leadership of Valentine Boraimo. The protest was held at the high court premises. According to their council, Adeshino Ogulano, the market was sitting on the land owned by the Federal Housing Authority. Ogulano said while the local government is merely to collect levies at the market, it has gone ahead to sub powers that does not belong to it and demolish properties worth millions of naira. The council said its clients will be taking a legal action against the local government. The agitation, the demonstration, the protest, the act of saying no of members of the Olorunda Unilola Market Association against the pulling down, the wicked economic attack, economic massacre. Economic genocide perpetrated against them about 12 days ago by the chairman of the Amuwo or Dauphin local government, Valentine Burema, an engineer who should be engineering lives, but is actually destroying lives. We are talking of the Onilola market that was set up in 1995-25 years ago, housing more than 5,000 units, costing more. 25 billion naira and pulled down without notice when the people there are not squatters. The land does not belong 
to the Amu World of the local government, but to the Federal Housing Authority. We are talking of a commercial center that we plan to resettle them to an alternative place pending when the new market will be in place. We'll take a break here, but still to come, Joe Biden appoints Nigerian-American Osama Nokolo as COVID-19 advisor. Let's take a recap of some of our top stories. President Mohamed Bari has signed the 2021 appropriation bill of 13.588 trillion naira into law at the last day of the year 2020. The signing was done at the presidential villa in Abuja on Thursday and was confirmed on the official Twitter handle of the presidency. The president also signed the 2020 finance bill. We also told you that more than 2,000 criminals were killed in the year 2020 by the Nigeria military. Defense headquarters said this on Thursday while briefing journalists on the activities of the military in securing the nation. In case you missed any of our news bulletins, or for more updates, do log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Google Plus at TV360 Nigeria. On Facebook, we're at TV360 Online. Moving out to COVID-19 cases and updates, Nigeria has recorded 11 deaths from COVID-19 taking the total fatalities to 1,278. The country's Infectious Disease Agency, NCDC, in its daily update also disclosed that 1,060 new cases were recorded, taking the country's total caseload to 86,576. Of the over 86,000 cases so far, active cases in the country have risen sharply to 11,976, while 73,322 patients have been discharged from hospitals after treatment. Data from NCDC also confirmed that the 1,016 new cases were recorded from 21 states, Lagos with a sharp increase of 434 FCT and Plateau followed with 155 and 94 cases respectively. The UK has pledged an extra 47 million euros of aid to provide food, water and shelter for vulnerable families heated, hit by COVID-19 conflicts and starvation around the world. Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab said the funding would help prevent the crisis from escalating into widespread famine. The aid is expected to help more than 1.3 million people in some of the world's most dangerous places, including across the Sahel, Syria and South Sudan. Nigeria, Somalia, Uganda, Zimbabwe, Venezuela and Mozambique would also benefit from the assistance. Now, the Lagos State Commission of Police, Hakim Odumosu, has ordered all men of the force in the state to enforce all protocols as highlighted by the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19. Odumosu instructed the police officers to enforce the 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. curfew imposed by the PTF, as well as ensure that total closure of nightclubs, bars, event centers, amongst others. The statement signed by the State Police Public Relations Officer, Ulumuyiwa Adejobi on Thursday comes as churches plan to hold crossover services on the night of December 31, 2020. Adejobi said the police boss gave the order while addressing area commanders and DPOs at the Powa Hall Odudua in Ikeje, Lagos. Up next is business stories and stock market review. Please stay with us.
Now we have Jerusha Amarego on standby to give us the latest in the world of business and stock markets. Thank you, Shade. Now, Naira has remained stable against the dollar, closing at 470 Naira per dollar at the prior markets on Wednesday, December 30th, as Nigeria's external reserve increased by $5.5 million in 12 days. The local currency had strengthened at about 7.8% within one week at the black market as the CBN introduced some measures targeted at exporters and importers. The increase in dollar supply after last week's drop reinforces the volat volatility of the foreign exchange market. The federal government, through the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, has said electricity consumers who paid for meters under the meter asset provider scheme will have a refund of their money. This disclosure was made by NEC in a segment through its head of public affairs, Michael Falosheyi, on Wednesday. The clarification is coming on the heels of inquiries by some electricity consumers who wanted to know if the money they had paid for meters under the MAP scheme will be refunded. Now, bearing in mind the recent government's pronouncement that 6 million meters will be distributed at, a cost, at no cost to customers under the National Mass Metering Program, NMMP. The commission said the first rollout of meters had already started based on the meters that were already available at the warehouse of the discos and meter asset providers. We'll take a pause here and return with Stock Market Review. Do stay with us. The Nigerian Stock Exchange All Share Index is closed in 2020 at the best performing, recording a growth of 17.2% a day to the end of the year. Now, this return, which is the highest annual growth since 2013, is the most among 33 equity indexes tracked by Bloomberg. Now, the bulls have returned, shooting up the All Share Index to a positive close today of 1.92%. Now, the breaking that breaking that down, we see that that's up to 40,270 basis points. Market capitalization also saw a soaring figure of about 21 trillion naira. Now, analysts have affirmed that these bullish runs of the equities market will extend to 2021 as low interest rates attractive dividend um, yields and any recovery has favored the market on this note. Market breadth also closed positive as 24 equities recorded losses against 18 equities. We see that MTN, the mobile telecommunication company of Nigeria, opened the gain as a list with a 9 Naira 9 Kobo gain. That's the Tronin Bois Cement who takes second place with a 6 Naira 95 Kobo gain. We also see all the gainers as the Buck Gas PLC, the Nigerian, the Nigerian, the NNFM also um, having its own gains. Taking a look at our top losers today, we see Presco, we see Interbrew, we also see Etana PLC and Eti Nigeria PLC having their own combined losses. Taking a look at the market summary today, we see that over 710 million shares valued at 10 billion Naira exchange deals in 4,396. Now on our foreign scene, we see that they are all on red. Now this is a sad thing because the, the average of 7% this year and the U.S. economy is flirting with 19, 29, 20 million COVID-19 infections and a complete legislative gridlock. While in Japan, we see that investors might not be as irrational or exuberant as this betting on solid profit for corporate America. Now to this end, we see the global stock close on red. Um, Food say on a 1.45% loss, Dow Jones a 0.096% loss, and Nikkei on a 0.45% loss. Now that's all we have on Stock Market Review. See you next year. I now leave you with Shade with the rest of the news. Uh, thank you very much, um, Jerry Shah, for bringing us up to speed on the latest in the world of business and stock market review. Definitely uh, the 1st of January. We hope that, um, you know, the stocks do better. Definitely. All right, moving out to the foreign scene where President-elect of the United States, Joe Biden, has named a Nigerian-American Osara Men Okolo as his COVID-19 policy advisor. Okolo was among 100 names announced as additional members of the White House staff by the Biden transition team on Wednesday. 
Biden will be sworn in on 20 January. Earlier named Nigerian American Adewale Adeyemo as Deputy Secretary in the Department of Treasury. Osara men born to Nigerian parents from Asa in Edo State at present serves at, on the Biden Harris Transition Domestic Policy Team. She graduated with honors from Harvard University in 2017 with degrees in medicine and American African American studies. Of next is entertainment reports. Blessing Odamo of the Alex Ekoeme Federal University, Ebony State, and Zachariah Obida of the Nasarawa State University last year have merged winners of the female and male categories of the 2020 Face of Nigerian Universities. The maiden edition of the event was held in Abuja, and organizers say it is aimed at connecting all universities nationwide to raise the campaign awareness against the gas rich quick syndrome among the youths. The message that Fumi is trying to preach and pass across to the, to the world, to Nigeria in general, is to let them know that there are other means of survival. Like as a youth, if you have the ability to believe in yourself, have a purpose. Yes, it's not going to be easy. That's how they call it dreams. It's never going to be easy. Believing in yourself, doing the right thing, praying, committing, being you know, consistent in that thing. There is no way you will not succeed. The essence of this event spans even beyond this hall today. And it is on us to ensure that the face of Nigerian universities goes on with the true vision of a greater, more united, and more prosperous Nigeria. The crown king and queen of the events have pledged to use their office to sensitize the youth on the need to be cultured and true patriots of Nigeria. I will use my office to reach out to those that cannot be able to voice out. I will be their voice out. I will speak for them. I will sp sp stand for them. I will support them. I will empower them. I will motivate them. I intend to achieve to empower so many youths out there who want to make quick money and also let them know that life, you don't rush in life. It's, it's step by step and you should always be patient because patience always helps. And that's all we have for you on the entertainment segment of News Now. Away from entertainment and to the world of sports, Ghana veteran striker Asa Morgian has been praised for his decision to move back home after 17 years abroad. Asa Morgian's decision to return to Lastins in the Ghana Premier League has been commended by former Netherlands midfielder George Boateng. The 35-year-old Eswal Sunderland and Udemy's forward made a comeback after 17 years abroad in October, signing a short-term deal with Legion Cetus. He has so far made a three appearances for his new side. And that's it in our package. Thank you for watching. I am Fola Shadi Ogurinde.